Hello, thank you for joining the meeting. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to listen to this meeting and learn about the funding options we have for your community. The city has been working with Civic Mike to educate your community about the landscape and lighting districts. Our primary goal is to provide information so you can make an informed decision about the services that are being provided to your community and the associated funding. We will cover the history of the district and loan option details in this meeting, as well as an introduction to the survey, surveys and ways that you can get involved in your community. The meeting will be, this meeting is recorded and shared on civicmic.com, which is where you have likely found us. And um, there's a lot of other useful information here about your district. So please look around, um, learn more about the district. If you have any other questions, please feel, reach, feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-676-7516 before taking the survey. With that, we will move into the presentation with a history of the district and loan option details by Chris Lewis from the city. Hey everyone, my name is Chris Lewis. I'm with the Public Works Department. I've been with the department since early 2020 and began really overseeing the districts in early 2021. Um, over the last year and a half or so, I've spent a lot of time um, learning the history and operations of the city's 16 landscaping and lighting maintenance districts. And I think I came at a really pivotal time because we do have an opportunity to make some really big um, changes and decisions in these districts and, and I look forward to it. So we do have a lot of information to cover. So I apologize in advance if I'm, um, if I'm speaking a little a little quickly, um, but feel free to ask questions at the end. Um, email us, as Danielle mentioned, there's several ways you can contact us, um, but please don't hesitate to reach out because we definitely want to get your um, questions answered. Next slide, please. Um, and this is just a, um, a brief uh, description of what we'll be covering, but I think Danielle did uh, mention this. We can go to the next slide. So I'd like to begin by uh, giving everyone a brief definition of what a landscaping and lighting or an LLMD is. So LLMDs are funding mechanisms to est uh, established by local governments in accordance with the 1972 Landscaping and Lighting Act. And they are formed to provide an enhanced level of landscaping and lighting services in a defined geographic area. The majority, if not all of these services confer a special benefit to a specific community and are therefore paid for by that uh, specific community. Any portion of the services that confers a general benefit to the uh, public at large is funded by the city itself. So these districts are often formed at the request of a developer prior to or at the same time a specific community is being built uh, to provide property owners with services that are above the standard level of service the city would normally provide in other public areas. While these LLMD assessments do appear on your property tax bill, they are not related to your property value or your standard 1% property tax, which actually goes towards other general um, countywide and citywide services like fire and police and library, et cetera. Next slide, please. I'll move into the history of each district. Uh, the Waterman Highlands District was formed in 1987 and was established to pay for landscape services only. So while LLMDs can pay for lighting and landscape, sometimes they're uh, set up to only provide one type of service. Uh, the city has been and currently pays all lighting costs in this area. The district boundaries roughly encompass the area between Tengate Road, the Puda South Canal, Hillborn Road and Waterman Boulevard. In May 1996, the City Council approved the district to have a maximum assessment rate of $195 per parcel. There was no automatic inflator or built-in CPI increase approved at the time this range, uh, this maximum was approved. Uh, this CPI or built-in inflator could have been used to mitigate the effects of rising costs over time. Next slide, please. The Pepper Tree District is quite similar to the Waterman District in that it was also formed in 1987. It was also established to pay for landscape services only, so the city pays for lighting costs in this area as well. And the maximum assessment rate was also established in May of 1996 without a built-in inflator, except the maximum rate for this district is $60 per unit. The boundaries for this district roughly encompasses the interior streets off Pepper Tree Drive from Cement Hill Road. Next slide. 
Uh, later in that same year, in November 1996, California propos uh, passed Proposition 218, which is an amendment to the California Constitution that restricts local governments from establishing new or increasing existing assessment taxes and other fees that were st established prior to November 1996 without a property owner or rate payer approval. So what this means in the case of the Waterman and Pepper Tree districts is that these districts are authorized to charge annual assessments anywhere from zero dollars all the way up to um, that those max rates established in May of 195 for Waterman and $60 for Pepper Tree. But the city is required to conduct a Proposition 218 vote and get property owner approval before increasing beyond those maximum rates. And this actually brings us to the purpose of the town hall uh, meeting tonight. So staff recently began a comprehensive review of all the city's 16 um, LLMDs for the purpose of determining the financial and operational viability of the districts. The Waterman and Pepper Tree districts were identified as requiring an increase in revenue in order to maintain um, services at the current level during the next couple fiscal years and beyond. These districts have really managed, along with some other districts that we have here, um, they're one of several that have managed to sustain services for about 30 years um, using just the annual assessments and any available reserves it may have from year to year without requiring an increase to those established maximum assessment rates. But we're really at a point right now where rising costs have exceeded the um, revenue we're authorized to collect each year. So it's time for the community to make some decisions as to the level of service they'd like to receive and the assessments they're willing to pay for the next 10, 20, 30 years, or however long these districts um, stay active. Next slide. I'll go over each district's budget projections and just give you a quick explanation of what you're seeing here in this chart. Uh, the first row shows the fiscal year, which our fiscal year runs from July 1st to June 30th of each year. The second row shows the beginning fund balance or the reserve amount that was available to that district at the beginning of that fiscal year. We see the next two rows show the revenue and expenses um, that were in and out of that district for that fiscal year. And finally, the ending fund balance, which is the reserve amount remaining at the end of that fiscal year or on June 30th um, of that fiscal year. You'll see with current projections, the Waterman District is projected to, to deplete, uh, pretty much deplete its reserved uh, fund by fiscal year 23-24. You'll notice that the district will only have about $1,000 in reserves by the end of that fiscal year, which really isn't a, a sufficient operating reserve for any district. And you'll also notice that in order to keep that $1,000 in reserves and to make sure the fund doesn't go into the negative, the district actually had to reduce the budget by about 20% from the previous fiscal year. So from about $117,000 in, in expenses to about $95,000 in expenses. And yet again, um, the last column there in fiscal year 24-25, you'll see that there needs to be another about 40% reduction in that year as well, just to maintain that $1,000 in uh, reserves. So when we were talking about reductions, um, we're actually referring to reductions that are uh, compounding in, in nature. So not only is the budget for services decreasing uh, just because we don't have enough re assessment revenue to support the services, but also the quantity of services decreases due to general inflation over time. So for example, if in 2022 right now your district receives weed abatement four times per month at a rate of $25 per service for a total of $100 per month, by the year 2025, those same weed abatement services may go up to $30 per service, which means for that same $100, your district can now only afford three services per month because that total is gonna now be $90 instead of um, uh, what the being able to support four services per month. Next slide, please. Uh, likewise, the Pepper Tree District will also start seeing a decline. Um, this is just a little bit later. They'll start seeing their decline in about uh, 2425. This district will make an initial reduction, 25% in, uh, reduction to the budget during that year and another estimated 35% reduction the following year, which is not shown here on this chart in order to maintain that small thousand dollar reserve and avoid a negative balance. Now, of course, these two scenarios um, that we've presented here represent what would happen if no action was taken to prevent these reductions. However, that is not the route the city is taken. taking. Next slide, please. The solution uh, for fiscal year 22-23 um, 
is shown here. In order to properly and comprehensively address the issues for both of these districts before we get to the point of reductions, um, as shown on those charts, the city must complete what we're referring to as a Proposition 218 process over the course of fiscal year 22-23. Now, this process that we're referring to is including two different things. The first is a community engagement process, and the second is a Proposition 218 analysis and balloting process. First, the community engagement efforts, um, I just want to stress that they are so crucial to this entire process, and they will be two-pronged. The first prong will include an educational approach to make sure that all property owners are aware of their district, they understand what services they're receiving, they understand the current situation that we're in. Um, we wanna make sure they have this piece first so that they make well-informed decisions at the ballot box. And then the second prong will include interactive tools and collaborative work groups, which will be available to all property owners in the district uh, to make sure that everybody can be a part of the decision-making process. Because we really want these future services and assessment rates to be a reflection of what the entire community wants as a whole. The main purpose of this community engagement uh, that we're talking about here is to determine what the services, um, what services each community would like to receive in the future. Um, oh, I think I'm, I'm sorry. Would you mind going to the next slide? Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you could back up. <laughs> sorry about that. Thank you. Um, so this could mean an increase or decrease in services, or it could just mean that the community wants to keep services as they are. And it's just a matter of us modernizing the assessment rates so that they fit what services actually cost in terms of 2022 dollars, as opposed to what they were projected to be back in the you know, 1980s and 90s. So the results of the community engagement effort um, and what we hear from the property owners over this next year is really going to determine what the uh, district looks like over, um, you know, in the next few decades. So that second um, effort that the city will be undertaking in the next year is a Proposition 218 analysis and balloting. So the Proposition 218 requirements as mandated by the state are actually way more involved than just a simple balloting process. So it's more than just getting a ballot into your hands and, and tallying um, that up. You see, the Proposition 218 um, does not just require that property owners approve um, the new assessments um, or taxes, but it also stipulates that for any proposed increase to assessments and uh, um, to assessments or taxes, local governments must prove and demonstrate the cost of each services or improvement that the district is providing. Um, it must quantify the proportion of special benefit each parcel within the district is receiving from those services and improvements, and it must quantify the proportion of general benefit those services and improvements provide to the public at large, among several other things. Proposition uh, 218 requires that the city prove and demonstrate all these facts in what is referred to as the engineer's report which of course is prepared by a professional registered engineer. However, you know, engineers can um, specialize in, in many different fields. Um, and the city has hired our consultant NBS, who also specializes in community engagement, um, to um, do this engineering analysis for us because they do have a specific expertise in assessment engineering. Next slide, please. The entire process with the community engagement and the Prop 218 balloting um, and, and engineering assessment work will take about a year to complete. This here is an approximate timeline of events. And as I won't go and, and um, read the entire slide here, I just wanted to point out that the bulk of the work, uh, meaning the collaborative uh, efforts and the engineering analysis were really will, will be taking place um, between July, 2022 and December, 2022 with ballots being sent to property owners in April of 2023 and final uh, rates being approved in June of 2023. Next, please. Ultimately, the goal is to establish, the goal of this whole process is to establish new rates and a new scope of services beginning July, 20, uh, July 1st, 2023. Now I put a little asterisk there because I wanted to make sure that um, you knew that it's, it's we would approve uh, or we would establish those new assessment rates and new scope of services only if the community um, desired that. Next slide, please. Now we can talk about the costs of what this Prop 218 effort will be. The cost for all of this work is approximately $80,000 per district. 
Now, if you remember back from our budget slides, neither district at the moment um, has enough re uh, reserve balance to cover this work and to also continue providing landscape services at the current levels. So property owners from each district will have the opportunity to provide their input as to how the district moves forward in fiscal year 22-23, uh, which is starting in about three, three weeks. It starts on July 1st. The first option property owners will have to consider is to reduce, um, is reducing landscaping services in order to cover the cost of the Prop 218 work. And the second option is to receive a loan from the city's general fund to uh, cover the projected $28,000 shortfall. And this will allow us to maintain the current level of services that you're currently per, uh, receiving right now and do the Prop 218 work. Next. Uh, if the first option is chosen, then your assessment rates will re remain the same in 22-23. However, since these districts are relatively small in terms of the number of rate payers, uh, the, the total assessments collected each year and the services that it provides, each district will see a pretty dramatic reduction in services during the fiscal year. Waterman will see an overall about 40% reduction over the course of fiscal year 22-23, beginning in about September uh, timeframe. And Pepper Tree, unfortunately, um, they are one of the smallest districts we have um, in terms of uh, total assessments. They will actually not have enough assessment revenue to provide any services for the fiscal year beginning in September. Next. With option two, each district could opt for a $28,000 loan from the general fund to be able to maintain the current level of landscape services and complete the Prop 218 work. If option two is selected, your assessment rates and landscaping services will remain the same in, 20, in fiscal year 22-23 while we go through this Prop 218 um, process. Next. Council has agreed to issue the loans at 0% interest for a term of five years. The annual loan payment is about $23 uh, per parcel in the Waterman District and a little under $12 per unit in the Pepper Tree District. Over the course of five years, property owners can expect to pay a total of about $116 in the Waterman District and about $60 in the Pepper Tree District. Next. Now, I mentioned a couple of slides back that property owners um, have two options at the moment to either reject or receive the general fund loan. Uh, now, each of those two options have two potential outcomes. So in other words, there are two options available right now that can lead uh, potentially lead to any one of these four uh, outcomes. I'm going to take you through this chart. There is a lot on here, but that's exactly why we're going to be posting this on the Civic Mike website. And you can also come back and refer to this recording. So I'm going to be reading this chart from left to right um, and go through each of the rows. So option one, outcome, outcome one, um, the option one is that the loan is not issued. So once property owners take the survey um, to, to voice their input on whether or not they would like to receive the loan, um, if the results of that survey is the property owners do not want to receive the loan, um, and we go through this next year and the Prop 218 process, and it's also determined that the property owners are not interested in increasing assessments or you know, receiving enhanced levels of service. Um, the effect on services, if those actions are taken, is that the services will just be decreased, um, reduced to match whatever revenue is available uh, beginning in fiscal year 22-23 and beyond. Uh, in 22-23, you'll see that blue bubble there. Um, you'll just pay whatever you're paying right now. So it's $195 in Waterman and $60 in Pepper Tree. And then beginning in 23-24 and, and really beyond, you'll just continue paying those current assessments. So that's option one, outcome one. The second row is option one, outcome two. Um, in this option, again, the, the loan was not um, received by the district. However, after we went through the year-long Prop 218 process, property owners have decided, actually, I would like to increase my services, and I don't mind increasing my assessment a little bit um, to make sure I get to keep those services or even get enhanced services. The effect of services on those actions taken is that in fiscal year 22-23, the services will be reduced to match the revenue available because, remember, we didn't receive the loan. But in fiscal year 23, 24 and beyond, we'll start receiving those new and enhanced services, whatever it is the community voted for during this next year. You'll see in the last two columns what effect on rates, on your assessment rates it will have uh, during fiscal year 22, 23. So starting in about three weeks, 
you'll still pay the same current assessments that you're paying right now. However, in fiscal year 23-24, you'll start paying whatever the new assessments are that you voted for. Going on into the third row, which is option two and outcome one, um, the loan is issued. So the results of the survey, um, I probably that should have said outcome three, sorry. <laughs> that was outcome one of option two. Hopefully they didn't confuse anybody. Um, but in this option, the loan is issued and new assessments are also approved over this next year. So what that means is uh, the effect on services is that during fiscal year 22-23, you'll actually see no change to whatever you're seeing, whatever services you're receiving right now, because we're going to have that loan to be able to backfill the shortfall that we're projecting. And in fiscal year 23, 24 and beyond, you will start seeing those new and enhanced services, whatever it is you vote for during this next year. So again, your 22-23 rates will be whatever you're paying right now. However, in 23-24, through 20, fiscal year 27, 28, you will be repaying the loan. So whatever that loan amount is, which is that um, $11 per year, and I, I think it was $20 uh, per uh, year or 15. Um, plus you'll be paying the new assessments that you voted for. So it will be both the loan payment and the new assessments for that five-year loan repayment term. After the five-year loan repayment term, you'll just be paying the new assessments. Now, the last option, um, option two and outcome two, this one is a little more tricky. Um, so I would like to spend just a little more time on this one here. Um, this option, these, these actions taken are if the loan is issued and we go through the year long process and it turns out that the property owners are not interested in, in approving new assessments. So they say, you know, actually I'm, I'm fine with just paying what I'm paying right now. And I'm fine also, you know, just reducing my services to match whatever revenues are available. Um, if this option and outcome comes to pass, then in fiscal year 22-23, you will have no changes to your landscape services. You'll see the same thing you're seeing right now, because again, we'll have that loan to backfill the shortfall. However, in fiscal year 23-24 and beyond, we will begin to reduce the services over time to match whatever revenues are available um, you know, in any given fiscal year. So again, your fiscal year 22-23 rates, you'll see the blue bubble. It's gonna stay the current rates um, you're paying right now. However, starting in fiscal year 23-24, um, you, you'll still be paying the same am amount you're paying right now. However, it, the assessments will be allocated to two different buckets. So you'll see right there, there's a little slice of pie getting taken out of that assessment rates. Um, a portion of your assessment will go towards the loan payment and a portion of your assessment will, the remaining portion will go towards actual services. Next slide, please. I don't mean to belabor this, but I know this one can be a little confusing. So I just wanted to make sure I give a little more explanation in, a, in an actual example so you can kind of see what the payment schedule would look like. The first half of the slide on top there, you'll see that's just a copy and paste of that, the last row from the previous slide. Um, and in the bottom portion of this slide, you'll see an example. So the example of what option two, outcome two could potentially look like is if your current assessment is $100 at the moment and a loan is issued with a $25 annual payment for five years, um, beginning in fiscal year 23, 24. And then we go through the year long Prop 218 process and it turns out that a new assessment is not approved. Then for fiscal year, 21-22 and 22-23, I'm, I'm looking at the chart there to the bottom right, um, you'll see that your assessment will stay at $100 and all of that $100 is going towards the portion of the, uh, it's going towards services. However, beginning in fiscal year 23-24 highlighted there in red, that's the beginning of the five-year loan repayment term. So you'll still be paying the same $100 because again, we did not, we did not approve or a new assessment was not approved. So you'll still be paying that same $100. However, it'll be apportioned un uh, to, for two in two different buckets. You'll see that only $75 of that $100 will actually go towards services and $25 will go towards the uh, loan payment. And it will um, be allocated that way for the uh, five-year repayment term. So you'll never uh, pay more than what you're currently paying now if option two, outcome two is selected. Um, 
But if this option, if this outcome does come to pass, then you'll actually end up seeing an even greater reduction in services during this loan repayment period, because not only will less of your assessment be going towards services, but the cost of services are likely to increase, um, thus reducing your spending power. So if you remember that example I gave earlier about the weed abatement and how um, it was $25 per service in 2022, but perhaps in, in the year 2025, those same services are increased to $30 per each you know, weed, weed abatement service. You can see how your spending power would be reduced on top of the actual um, revenue available for services being reduced during that, that uh, repayment period. So this one can be a little tricky. So I know I spent a little bit of time on that, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, this option was, was clear. Next slide, please. And that actually concludes my presentation. So at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to NBS to talk about how you can get involved. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, we'll have Michelle go ahead and speak about next steps and how to get involved. Michelle? Thank you, Danielle. All right, so there are three main ways to get involved and with different capacity and time commitments. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide. So the first one is to visit civicmike.com slash Fairfield. Uh, <laughs> yes, so if you go to the website, go ahead and go to the next slide. You can learn more. Uh, be sure to select your district. We recommend you look through the website and read up on information on your district. If you sign up for updates or take the survey, we will keep you informed through your email and with any updates we have. We also recommend that you bookmark the page so you can find it easily. Go ahead and go to the next slide. The second step is to take the survey. Go ahead and go to the next slide. If you go to civicmike.com slash Fairfield, you should find your community and click the survey under that community. Please be sure to select only your community survey. This is the best way for the city to know what services your community wants and determine if your community would like uh, a loan to temporarily continue the services. Go ahead and go to the next slide. And the third is to join the working group. Uh, this is a little bit more of a time investment. If you would like to join the working group, the goals are to provide community guidance through the entirety of this process, encourage community consensus and participation, to provide community input during the project and gather community feedback, and working openly and transparently with respect for all community members. If you would like to join the working group, that you can select it on the survey or you can email me at margrich at civicmike.com. And go ahead and go to the next slide. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Again, you could do it through civicmike.com slash Fairfield. You can call us at 1-800-676-7516 or email at margrich at civicmike.com or by mail at the address listed on the screen. I wanted to reiter reiterate that the survey is very important. It is what the city will be using to recommend, uh, recommend loan services to city council. Uh, the poll or the survey will be closing on July 15th. So please be sure to give your opinion before then. Thank you.